Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO Brazil Edition, but Sunday at the beach. The sun rose early in the morning as Paulo sped through the streets with his opal. It was Sunday, the day of rest, and it showed as he drove past buses full of old ladies heading to church. Today he had a different goal to see. His girlfriend Maria, sitting on the passenger seat, grinned with excitement every time he hit the throttle and the V8 rumbled louder than the song playing on the radio. He never thought a young man like him would have a car like this. That joy was for playboys from Ipanema. Not for the son of a single mother like him. There was something he'd learned recently, though. Miracles happen, such as an accounting job at the governor's office, earned through a hard selection process and many nights without sleeping for the entrance exam. Now he reaped the rewards of his hard work by cruising fast. As the speedometer hit 99, Paolo drove through the tunnel. No traffic at all. He remembered reading on the news about how there used to be a favela on the hill and how Governor Lacerda demolished it to build the tunnel. Paolo didn't give much thought about it. After all, going from his home to Copacabana in less than an hour used to be the stuff of dreams. Though Paolo parked next, right to the right next to the white sands, as Paolo pulled his surfboard off the roof, I saw it turned a more pressing matter. Seeing the sun reflecting off Maria's golden hair. Today is a good day. What have they done? Ever done for us? So with all that out of the way, does anyone have any questions? Ah, oh, get screwed. Gilmar smiled awkwardly at the profane, shriveling farmer woman at the front of the crowd. What was she? Eighty? Whatever she was, she led the coalition of local farmers, natives, and incredibly bad-mouthed elders that had shown up in the force to brigade Gilmar's announcement when he got to the news that the Trans-Amazonian Highway had finally been hooked up to Maraba, and that he was scheduled to make the announcement. Gilmar had been very excited. It was a chance to see the public to get some well-deserved publicity. He expected cheers, flowers, junk, seven, anything but this. You cash my gosh darn farm in half, Jack Booty. How many more trees are you going to chop down, dumb screwer? One of your idiot workers let my cows out. They're stu stupidly gone. The crowd had dirty peasants that shoved their way into the middle of the crowd halfway through the speech and hadn't showed up since. Gelmar knew that there was some unrest about the highway, but making it manifest like this was unnerving. It was probably time to make an exit. Wait, was she holding a rock? Uh, thank you, that is all. Hey, ho! Warning from a crowd that isn't unusual for the Brazilian bureaucrats. God dang, we're losing more political power every day. But now we can invest more. So, like last time, we invest here, invested here, and now we're going to invest here and it sponsor the industry here. And then next we're going to do the South. Just for funsies. Because we're here for the funsies. As poverty's getting a little better. As we're still investigating the Hesitant Leagues as we read last time. And we did to... Ooh, over oh, there goes Mr. Adolf. Uh, Penn and Agarian Bill. So hopefully we can do this. But Akeda. As the world came out of Germania. Oh, the so-called capital of the world. That Adolf, uh, Adolf Hitler. The big daddy of the Nazi Empire. Self-proclaimed master of Europe. And at least suffered the fate of all flesh. Many people of the Republic of Brazil had joined throughout the plan to celebrate the demise of a man whose existence had blighted the, t the entirety of humanity. Uh, one of those was the governor of Guanabara, Carlos Lacerda. While he was extremely restrained in glee, his glee in public, the moment he was sure he was alone, he started yelping and shouting in joy, in fact. He ran around in glee for a few seconds before catching himself and sitting down to ride along polemic denouncing Hitler, everything he stood for, and the devil that he was. Vice President Janio Quadros celebrated the situation the only way he knew, by getting drunk. On the other hand, Juscelino. Uh, Kubishak celebrated this development in the company of one of his mistresses. <laughs> Good. People like Enrique Lott, on the other hand, was more restrained, simply breaking out the champagne and singing out a special meal. Getulio Vargas was quietly pleased. While Hitler's prestigious Thousand Year Reich was collapsing, all that Vargas had left behind was for successors still prospered. But amidst all the celebration, there's one man who was sad about the demise of Hitler. This was uh, Brazil's local fascist specimen, Wilson Let Passos. While Lacerda, having typed out page after page of anti-fascist diatribes, replaced his typewriter ribbon, Wilson went to the German embassy to express his condolences. It was the only name in the entire book that was not of an ethnic German. While others, suffused with glee, said to each other that perhaps the Nazi tyranny might finally begin to fall. Uh, Wilson had only one thing to say about the whole thing when asked about it. This is not the end. Not by any means necessary. So, things are falling apart. Union negotiations versus Wrangle the Ranchers. Um, maybe... Or union, union negotiations. Mm hmm. We may do this one. We try this one. The labor unions are one of the major factors of the current crisis. They are the organizing force behind some of the larger strikes currently ongoing. It's so imperative for us to get them on board with this bill if we wish to see it or use it as a means to bring back industrial harmony. However, oh. <clears throat> if our bill is too weak, our arbitrators may backfire and cause them to keep on protesting. Currently, we'll meet with union leaders, uh, determine what issues if they have with the current bill, and see if we can reach a permanent modus vivendi with them. I figure we go this side, because for the most part, we went left with the Navis plan, so we might as well go left with this side. So we'll see. If it doesn't work out, well, well I'll, I'll, I'll make some funky stuff up. As the world's falling apart, but happy November, everybody. At least not us falling apart right now. Eventually it will be, but you know, you never know. Hanspeidel. 11%, nice. The Warsaw Uprising. 
Ah, everything is falling apart, as it should. The bull and the pandas. Ademir de Barros, governor of Sao Paulo, was out and about, uh, as was his wont. This time was visiting Sao Paulo Zoo, where the sphere had gone so graciously he sent a few pandas to form a new enclosure. As the news of it spread throughout the province, countless people came in from all parts of Sao Paulo and the associated hinterlands to see the strange bear-like creatures. <coughs> cool. Um, of course, there's a perfect opportunity for Ademir. Um, you know, we're going to go this way because we can. He had to learn from his hard one honestly, gain experience at glad handling with the common people advanced like this was a perfect method to gain more support. All the more when it was an event that Ademar had himself set up, where he arranged everything. None of this would have occurred without his work. He planned to make that very clear to the people that approached him. As Ademar walked around and charmingly guessed with a... Uh... Oh, he's impeached. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Uh, none of this would have occurred without his work. He planned to make that very clear to the people that approached him. As he walked around and charmed the guests of the zoo with his flamboyant, engaging style, making sure everyone had at least a foggy idea of uh, where, his butter was, or his, uh, where his bread was buttered, another man was making the rounds of his mind. The town was coming for him to make uh, Carlos Lacerda to get to work on the little plan they'd come up with, and Adamar was hammering about out how to best make sure that the scenario would play out in his favor and leave him um, in the God-given rightful place as president of Brazil. Adamar I might have had the habit of calling in favor of God so often as to make the ears of every angel, angel, throne, and dominion, and the saint ring a hundred times over, but he knew very well that he could expect his maker to do all the work. With that in mind, he turned towards Carlos Lacerda, who could see out of the entrance of the zoo, and put on his best smile. It was showtime. Probably not going to go very well for him, but whatever. Dead to GDP ratio is going up more, which is kind of a little worrying, but, you know, whatever. Again, I'm trying to get to acceptable next. More debt limit, please. Oh, it actually gives us more stability, too, which is pretty good, too. Could use that stability. We'll try union negotiations. The Vagarian Relief Bill. It begins the process of Vagarian reform. We'll redistribute land from inefficient, money gorged landowners such as ranchers and hand it over to the more deserving people, smallholders, peasants. We know the land more intimately and better prepared to make it prosper. The bill also has emergency relief and loans, making sure the agricultural sector does not suffer but continues to grow and improve. This will also hopefully put an end to the protests currently paralyzing our country. Passing a, a Proyecto de Ley, or bill, through the Senate requires at least 34 senators. Once introduced, an estimate of how many supporters has been displayed below. Once the voting period begins, political power can be spent convincing senators to pledge their support. The negotiations are more effective for parties who have a higher percentage of existing supporters. Members of the President's Coalition, of course. So that's good to see for now. <coughs> Hold the vote. We've done as much glad handling, negotiating, politicking, and bargaining as President Locke deemed necessary to see this bill of his through. Now that was left to put an end to the incandescent or incessant of prevarication that is so common in politics and finally get on with putting the Hungarian Reform Bill to it now. Vote in the Congreso Nacional. The pessimist within lot words that this bill cannot get the votes that are needed for it to pass, but the more hopeful part of him thinks that he has probably, he hopes, God willing, uh, convinced enough people for this much needed policy to get through. My God, I hope it goes through. Growth is not doing as well, which sucks, but whatever. The fascist move. Walter Sal sat across from Lot in the president's office, a sheaf of papers clutched in his hands. He spread them around his desk, a collection of graphs, reports, intelligence maps. That's everything we have on the South African War. The U.S. is almost certain to intervene along with the rest of the offense shortly, but even without German support, the shield is upper hand. President Law through, sifted through the papers for a while, examining each document and asking for an occasional clar uh, clarifying question. He was sure the problems in the nuclear law excelled at solving. Troop movements, logistics, naval clashes, and, and native resistance, and foreign intervention. The SAW was a mighty puzzle. But as Law examined the collection of reports, he realized that the piece was missing. The OFM was on the back foot, democracy was on the back foot, and so Brazil was on the back foot. Law, not, well, Law stood suddenly. Uh, let's take a walk, Walter. I have some ideas. I need to air Sal's followed him after, and they made their way slowly out of the building. As soon as they were outside, Lot began to speak. We're removed from the eagle here, Walter. South America has already faced German aggression. The war will stop this. But how long can the civil war last? The Germans are at the weakest point in the decades, but they're already rebounding. Standing by would be criminal. I, I'm rambling, Walter. He suddenly turned around and stared at Sal's. No matter what happens, I will not allow fascism to extinguish another democracy. Brazil will stand South Africa, or you can call me Enrique Silva. They walked for a while, discussing how they would spin this intervention. We're almost halfway. Cogs in the machine. Paolo, you know there's no chance of Synod that would approve this addition to the bill. Jingo, I know you lead the PTP, but what the heck is that even supposed to mean? Are we here to discuss votes in a chamber, or are we here to prove the lives of our fellow countrymen? Goulart sighed and wrapped his knuckles along the table. These tracks have been going on for a month, and President Law had sent him to negotiate with the leaders like some sort of lapdog. Why couldn't that marshal be out here himself? He's a president, and he should be the one responding to the people. Paolo, we can have a pipe dream. Of a free republic leader with all the land reform we could possibly want. It doesn't matter if we cook up the perfect set of reforms, only the entirety of the UDN walks out on us. And why exactly do we have Garat's butt about the UDM? Those fascists should be locked. A tall man named Lucas raised his hand to interject. Jingle, look. 
to Lucas. I know the leader of the strikes. We have to be able to get something more out of the current belt. What if we give the banks additional money to issue more loans to protect small farm owners and ensure that the ranchers can't buy them out immediately after you redistribute the land? Lucas, do you want to trust the banks to help the poor? Have you absolutely lost it? Yelled Paolo as his fist slammed to the desk. No, I'm not. Lucas sighed. Jango's right. We need the union. Heck, we don't even know if the PSD is fully supporting our initial demands. We have to start somewhere. Screw you guys. I can't believe I thought you two stood for something, Paolo muttered. As he slammed the door behind him. After an uneasy silence, Gullard co coughed awkwardly. Well, what else are we still palatable? What else is still palatable for the UD and the PSD? A uh, question, Lucas. And for the next four hours, several of Brazil's most prominent labor leaders huddled to try and figure out what they could do compromise on. However, by the early hours of the morning, it was clear. There are potential changes to the bill. Sport will rises. At least 50 No consensus could be arranged. Uh, what if we do that one? Kingdom of Caucasia? Oh, and we have up here too. Brazil to the rescue. We'll get there eventually. I want to do all this stuff first. So hopefully this is going to pass. Uh, time for a strain. The bell is passed and it's time to let the water settle. And a gearing performance of this kind will have the same effect as throwing a large boulder into the sandy pool. The water and other things in the pool started moving all over the place. Accordingly, while we deal with the consequences of this success of ours, let's avoid the urge to go off on any other policy adventures. We must enforce this bill and bring the recent fight of ours to a successful conclusion, rather than setting off a new one and overextending ourselves, of course. Nice. And we'll finish this one. This must be. And we're going to finish out the mechanized stuff, too. Let's see what the next one is. No? Okay. Moderately industrial, that's nice. Still 35. Well, the Senate, though, officially considering the Garen bill, uh, its sponsor must accumulate 34 votes before the final vote is called. If we do this, we get better consumer goods production factor. Poverty slowly improves, as well as agriculture. Nice. Not to do any more, and very nice. Resort of the rescue. Millions of our Lucifer brothers are oppressed by the Nazi tyranny of Angola and Mozambique. Worse yet, millions of South Africans are now also in danger of being put under the jackboot. Brazil can neither can neither neither can nor will us such a terrible state of affairs to continue without intervening. Just as the Prussian cavalry arrived at the last moment to save the British of Waterloo, the Brazilian army shall come to Africa and save the Angles again. Even better, the collapse of the African Rax Commissari will make Brazil the main naval power on the south of the Atlantic, thereby decisively ending the naval conflicts that we have had to fight for the past twenty years. The president has ordered it, and thus it shall be so. We shall go to war with the support of South Africa. Brazil to the rescue, my friends. Well, I coughed twice before speaking. Let's get this out of the way immediately. I intend to join the OFN defense of the South African against the shield. Uh, to do any less is to allow fascists to continue the campaign of murder unchecked. Lot sat down at the head of the long meeting table, looking at the assembly of generals before him. At the other end said Odilio Denis, war minister. To his right sat Quadros. This meeting would decide once and for all the Brazilian response to the South African war. Denis piped up first. I think I speak for the entire military high command when I say that we agree, Mr. President. We're already prepared to offensive against the shields, so I recommend we get right into the planning. There's no objections. Everyone around the table gave varying grunts of affirmation, nods, and even the odd, yep, all took one. Do you want the Germans to shoot our heads off, or next? There's already a gosh darn continent full of Nazis. Why antagonize them? Whenever Barry or whatever horse son wins their civil war, they're going to make nuke us into pace. I object. Quadros had finally, st finally stood up now, and banged his fist on the table at the end of the, uh, end for good effect. He slammed his hands down again and sat back in his seat, red face and puffing. An awkward silence filled the room until a lot tentatively broke it. Well, thank you, Johnio, but if there's nothing else, let's get into the planning. Quadra stormed out of the meeting and wasn't seen for the rest of the day. The bill passes. Celebrations could be heard across Brazil's farms today, as the Senado will pass the Aguirre and Early Fact. The act redistributes land from the various corporate entities and rich ranchers back down to local peasants and smaller farmers in hopes of creating more equitable opportunities for the lower class and to improve agriculture output. President Lott has alleged that many ranchers are inefficiently using their massive plots of land and that it would be better use in the hands of the local populace. Despite calls for compromise from both the unions and ranchers, President Lott proceeded directly with the original version of the bill and his gamble appeared to have paid off. The bill, drafted in response to a crippling strikes from various unions across country, also gives Brazilian banks money for the insurance of loans to peasants and smaller farmers. Although the rich are remarkably unhappy with how their assets are being seized, even they cannot argue they are truly using the land at all, the PTB has agreed to work with the provincial officials to accelerate the land and distribution process and ensure that loans are fairly issued, something the UDN took immediate exception to. Regardless of how much bickering will follow the act, many can argue that there is clearly new management regarding the agricultural sector. Unnecessary step to level the playing field. And part is even a little better now. Great, great, great. I apologize for that. Uh, are we done with this? 
We're done with this. Oh, but uh, it's lagging, so. What else do you know? What do you expect? Relationship has currently collapsed. Quadros will resign. Huh. Well, maybe see if we should uh, improve it. It's volatile. I guess we'll keep it there for now. I guess. Uh, what else going to do about South Africa? Red Revolution in Greece. What the heck? Convince the people. One of the most important things we in, uh, inherited from the Estado Novo Dictatorship was the Agen Agencia Nacional, or National Agency, which was responsible for producing and disseminating government newsreels and media. By cooperating with American newspapers and to disseminate the news of Nazi atrocities in Africa and utilizing the nationalistic propaganda created by our army, we can cause a patriotic surge similar to the one we had during the Second Great War. We just need to hope that the war doesn't end like the last one. CIA contacts. CIA is everywhere, and there's little that we can do to completely root it out of our country. At the moment, however, President Locke can still, can still talk with his American friends about using it to influence public perception to a favor of the war through the creative methods that American intelligence service knows best. The CIA and other American factors can take care of that task that Locke does not want the Brazilian government to get involved in. Let them take care of the bribes, intimidation, so on, aid Brazil's efforts to join the war and be a victory for the free world. Uh, modern parable. Can you actually send volunteers yet? Or, no, you cannot. Uh, modern parable. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, to, uh, Radio MEC, but before we get back into the music, I've been asked to share a little story with our listeners. Not too long ago, a coalition of fascists attacked the Union of South Africa, the last beacon of democracy in the continent. Now our boys are getting ready to ship out and help the war effort, fighting alongside the Union to protect democracy. Problem is, an awful lot of you think this is a bad idea. An awful lot of you'd rather let the fascists win, let them keep up their mass murder and oppression of our brothers and sisters across the sea, of course. So I've got a little story to share with you. A fair while ago, the crucial monster took control of one of the world's oldest countries. This country had been chipped away for a long time, turned small and helpless by the passing of time, foreign wars. When this monster took control, the people loved him. He was a vicious, murderous drug addict that lived off of cruelty and hatred, but he promised to return to better times. This monster slowly grew its power, grew its armies, but the nations around him did nothing. Were they afraid? No. The monster could have been stopped at any time, but no one would take the time to put an end to him. They were too apathetic, too sure of their own victories and glory. Finally, the monster and his armies attacked one of the nations surrounding him. The nation cried out for help against cruel hordes that ransacked its natural beauty and the free society, but they were ignored. The monster destroyed this country and brought its ruined lands to its own hateful society. With new lands and industry, the monster turned its attention to gathering an even larger army, until eventually it collapsed its even old, powerful neighbors. From there, it took hardly an effort to destroy it all, everything in sight. It turned on its old allies, and the monster lived off its death and cruelty for a long time. Let's kill this monster in the crib. Convince the legislature. Political articulation is a difficult thing, but thankfully the president has got figures like Tancredo Nevis and Edna Lott to engage in the requisite... Uh, a smooth talk with the legislatures. The good part of fighting side to side with Americans is that the UDM will be easier to convince, and Carlos Lacerdo was also showing strong support for the war, but there's still those that strongly isolationist members of the PTP that might need a bit of encouragement. Through reforms, agreements, and occasional bribe, the road to intervention shall be obstructed, and the legislatures will, one by one, come around to Brazil intervening on South Africa's behalf. More naval stuff. Send our guns or air support. <coughs> As our intervention grows, uh, and size, more after action reports return from the front, it has become clear that one of the major advantages that the Reichs Commissariat enjoys is their e efficient use of air power. As such, we must reduce their advantage by sending more helicopters to better supply our troops and bring the battle to the enemy. Good, or reliable Brazilian bombers and helicopters will defeat Sudwest West Africa's fighters. Thus, as long as to drive the Germans out of the air before crushing them on the ground and proving once and for all that they are not the master race. Send a letter to your representatives. Annoyed officials flirted, or <clears throat> felted out of the National Congress building, still bickering amongst themselves over the recent debate on intervening in the South African war. Most PSD and USD members were dead set on intervention, but almost all the PTB were fiercely opposed to the war of any kind, sticking steadfast to the isolationist policies at the moment. The independents and smaller parties were mostly neutral. President Lott aimed to change that. Party whips were running themselves ragged, do dashing to and fro between the offices of every official who so much looked at the fence. Nothing besides out and out blackmail is off the limits, so assurances, amendments, and quite a few bribes were being lavished on the typically ignored minor parties who were relishing the sudden attention. Pro war politicians already had the majority, but the more officials Lot brought onto the side, the better. He had no intention of dealing with the squabbling bureaucrats when he ran a campaign. Luckily, most had been receptive to the idea. Brazil's armed forces hadn't properly stretched their legs since the embarrassment of World War II. It was time to demonstrate why the we were still the masters of South America. As people called for war, the representatives began to answer and send guns. Brazil has its own military industrial complex, of course. <coughs> Uh, inherited from this new state in the Gomez government that followed it. In defense of democracy, we shall flood South Africa with as many guns as we can. These guns will supply the poorly equipped South African troops, allowing them to hold the line against the flood of Boers and Germans. These guns will include the state-of-the-art Brazilian equipment, but also large quantities of older models that are being replaced, after all. And now the gun is better than nothing. It's not as, as if we're sending them blunderbusses. An unexpected invitation. That was a fine day in Brazilia, and Genio Quadros had a letter on his desk. This, however, is no ordinary letter from a petitioner, a curious high school student. Or, that matter, a sycophantic... Good for nothing of a minor politician. 
He didn't take such letters. Uh, give a formal, formal letter reply, sign him, and throw him into the nearest wastebasket. What was so different about this letter? It was a letter from Carlos Lacerda, a fanatical opponent of the current government and a fellow grandee of Lacerda's UDM, my dear Janio. I've heard of some important information. There is a great urgency and potential benefit uh, to the Republic of Brazil. Accordingly, I'd be deeply grateful if you could pay me a visit at my office in the next few weeks. Gianni had no difficulty guessing what the crow wanted to talk about. After a long look at the letter and contemplating its contents, he sighed, swigging from his hip flask and folded the letter back up into the envelope. His decision was made. Why not? We got the political power. We might as well, right? 11% is not great. 34% is getting actually worse. But air support. Operation Deodoro. Time's gone. The people have been inflamed by our campaigns. Politicians are following our policies, and voices of the non interventionists such as Quadros, have been overshadowed by the loud crowds of the people, of course. Brazil sent volunteers and its soldiers across the Atlantic to fight and die for democracy and freedom. Some talk of increasing violence by locals against people of German ancestry, but surely it's merely propaganda entered by Hitlerite sycophants implemented, implanted in Brazilian society. Never mind the discriminatory policies enacted in South Africa. Lives always better than the Anglos and the German backed Boers. Even if we did decide that to change our minds, it is too late. The propaganda we gave to the people has too, been too effective. They demand war and victory. Brazil is coming to Africa for the defense of democracy and for the rescue of our brothers. Santa Apua. Welcome to the jungle. Hey, look at that. So do we do this one? I think we do this one. Multi. Oh, I'll do it one more time. And then we'll go back to the mechanized stuff. Drawing battle plans. When Genio's Quadros, neither drunk nor especially angry for once, entered the office of Carlos Lacerda, found himself another person there that he unexpected, or for that matter, wanted to see. Ademar, what the heck are you doing here? Ademar de Barro small slightly. Carlos here thought I'd be of use in this little discussion of ours. Ah, uh, Quadros concluded that that made sense, though he was still out displeased, speaking of. Where was the crow this fine day? At that moment, Lacerda came in from behind, surprising Quadros. The crow's here, good to you, Genio. Quadros, I'm shaking off his initial shock, not a yes, the same for both of you. As you could probably guess, I'm in, so what's the plan? Lacerda and Ademir smirked and leaned forward. Lacerda began to speak. You know that we are a project of Lot's. That highway, let's take all the dirt we have about the embezzlement and fraud that's happening on the highway and the fact that Lot hasn't done a single thing about it. We can set off a few hundred protests and riots and let, let, let's got Lot's government collapse under the chaos and put someone distinctly better than him up in his place. Quadros approved and nuttingly. Things were well, he'd be able to hold Lacerda and Ademir back, force Lot out, and take the presidency for himself. That's a great plan, Carlos. But we're over halfway done now. Welcome to the jungle. A crow crowd of South African. Men and women burst into the cheers as the first Brazilian Marines disembarked from the ships, heralding the entry of South Africa's gr South Africa's South America's greatest power into the war for liberty. Ettore marched in the middle of the column, grinning and putting his head down as the Brazilians weathered a storm of backstops and throwing flowers. Eventually, they pushed through the crowd and made their way to the temporary barracks just outside of Cape Town. After a long and bumpy truck ride, they arrived and began to unload this gear. Once the things were stowed, the weary Brazilians were set loose in a large communal lot packed full of other Marines and foreign volunteers. There will be full of debriefings, gear checks, and typical bureaucracy involved in immobilization, but for now, there's nothing to do but fraternize toe dinner. Ettore sat on a loose crate and wiped his brow. He was worn about the heat, but the real thing was even worse than he imagined. Ettore lifted his head as he heard the trump of boots on gravel growing nearer, barely dodging an outthrust, viciously a sunburnt hand. A young man stood straight as a rail in front of him. Uh, yeah, howdy there, sir. I'm from the... My name's Private Smith. U.S. Army. Just... I want to introduce myself, sir. Ettore smiled and shook Smith's hand. Nice to meet you, Smith, but please put on some sunscreen. You don't need it. All right. Uh, what is this? So we're done with the focus sheet for now. Um. Here's the restless. Uh. Is it on the map here? Preside. I may need to reload the game to see if this is actually going to work or not, so we'll see. A shocking revelation. Uh, Valdo Valdomiro Conciacao Belchior, as, as you can tell, I don't speak Portuguese. A well to do denizen of Sao Paulo called Valdo by his friend sat down and read the day's paper. To his disappointment, there was even more news about corruption on the front page, and since there's a bribery on the trans Amazonian highway project have come to our attention. Due to leaks from within the lot administration and the leadership of the highway project, various cases of embezzlement, rewriting through bribery, extortion, protective protection directeering. More of this rubbish, Valdo thought. He wondered what Lot thought about this. We've reached out to the president for comment, however, no response was forthcoming at the pre press conference. A press time. As you might expect, Valdo was fairly disappointed. More corruption was not what Brazil needed. I was a darn fool to think anything else would change, wasn't I? But I did find out where it is. Foreign policy. Here we go. Global conflicts. So there we go. This is different, and I'm not used to this, so. 
Lose command power, they get Brazilian tech assistance. When removed, removes the uh, operation search and destroy. Uh, eh, I don't know. We can sell stuff though, actually. We can buy more tanks and whatnot. I sent uh, the helicopters and a normal infantry division. I kind of don't mind selling some of these. How much? How many APCs do we have? We have to do it once. Screw it. We're here to make a buck. Money? Ah, I feel better now. Alright, let's see what we can do about this. But uh, in the meantime, Quadros surrenders resignation. General Quadros looked at his secretary. Are you ready then? The secretary nodded. Very well then, let's begin. Quadros began his dictation. People of Brazil, I have received great information regarding the running of the Trans Amazonian Highway project. Um, as this project has proceeded, officials and workers have been ridden down by bribery, extortion, and corruption at every turn. Worse yet, our president, Enrique Locke, far from addressing these as his station demands, seems to have decided that fighting corruption is not a priority for him. You all know that I cannot agree with that kind of mindset under any circumstances. As I believe that a government must focus on total elimination of corruption in its functioning, I have made two following demands for the president. A full investigation into the corruption that's taking place, the total and immediate rectification of any abnormalities in the project. If the president fails to comply with these demands, which are reasonable by any standards, I have no choice but to resign in order to serve the country through other means than as vice president to a man who will neither fight corruption nor allow their others any input in governance. Quadros, looking at the final document, nodded approvingly and grabbed a copy of the resignation letter he had drafted. Sealing them in each envelope, he called our secretary, sent this one to the press, and the other one to Carlos Lacerda and Guanabara. Hopefully that cooks his goose. Well, let's keep a little more stability, because why not? Are we there yet? Not quite. And now we're there. Ready to die. Mm. Uh, we'll go center Ernesto this time. You, you can be, honestly, a scavenger might not be bad. Get more equipment ratio. Why not? Well, let's see what we can do right here. I already said some planes, some fighters and whatnot, so. And they are right here. We're doing okay. Lots and strong. Enrique Taxera Lot, president of the Brazilian Republic, was addressing the matter of corruption in the Trans Amazonian Highway Project. Senior Quadros has raised concerns. Uh, about the matter of corruption on the Trans-Amazonian Highway. I'll take decisive action in order to resolve these concerns. I promise a full independent inquiry into the execution of the highway project, the rectification of any and all abnormalities, and the punishment of all those who are found attempting to corrupt the project. In the press gallery, a reporter looked at his friend. Isn't his this fulfill Quadro's demands of the letter? Then why is he resigning? The other reporter shrugged. He's planning to move forward with his resignation because the working relationship between him and Lauder deteriorated beyond recovery. First report left. No thanks, Quadros, of course. So in essence, Quadros threw a snit, and since Lost didn't lose power, he has to leave with his tail between his legs. His friend nodded, yeah, that's pretty much it. La best laid schemes. Oh, look at this. More stability. Jao Goulart assumes the vice presidency, and finally update the focus tree. Look at this guy. Handsome. He's an old general. And look at this guy. Jao Goulart. Ooh, more political power. Left wing populist, huh? Oh. Now we have another tree. Yay. Business as usual. President Marshal Enrique La has survived whatever crises has come his way and can now get back to business. Well done, Senor Presidente. On the vencedor e voce. Lot has gathered his cabinet for the true task, he says. A task that will preserve Brazilian democracy and ensure another 55 can never occur again. Will begin now. Operation Tucan. Operation Tucan is President Lot's plan to de depoliticize the armed forces of Brazil. Lot wants to remove uh, self centered hardliners and replace them with the constitutionalist officers and generals who will respect and protect democracy. Lot entered into this endeavor knowing that past violent storm of ocean, that is, the armed force, will be so difficult as to make a lobster war seem like a brief dip in a child's pool by comparison. Well, let's collapse. And we're doing okay with everything else here, so. Now, in the meantime, I gotta figure out which way we went last time, because it looks like there's quite a few decisions for us to take, but I wanna see if we can do anything down here. Boys, where are you at? Why are you taking so long, boys? Boys, why? Why, boys, why? We need some more motorized. Oh, good lord. And some air salt stuff. You guys move in? Yeah, let's see what you can do. You're doing decently, though. It's good for army XP, though. Let that division leave, and maybe we can go here. And circle destroy, you know? Good stuff. Government prevailed. Oh, are they still connected? I think they are. Bruh. Because these guys are encircled. Oh, that's not good. It's really possible to tell. At least we rescued those guys. That's good. Blomfontein? 
Malaya, it's having issues, but what else is new? Go here. Nice. Yeah, what's up? Doesn't really matter too much. Maintenance. Signal companies. There we go. Venue plan. There was a pleasant day in the Palacio de Pal uh, Planalto. And Enrique Taixera uh, a lot was pleased that he was able to use his good day to meet with someone who's neither an opponent of his nor somebody who could have just messed up. Uh, or did indeed somebody out to see what they could get from him. Uh, quite the contrary, it was his team predecessor, Julasino Kubishek, a grandee of Lotto and PST. Both of them considered each other friends and mentors, and with good reason, when Kubishek was elected in 55, Lot helped the constitutional effort that defended him against Putschisch. And when Lot stood for election in 60, Kubishek had showed the previously apolitical marshal the ropes of politics. Now, Kubitschek was in Lot's office to discuss a new plan that the president had. Since the matter of quadrus was now settled once and for all, and Lot's hands were now free. Now, as you'll see, no. I followed yours and Ava's way of th doing things a lot of the time, and it all went well and good, but I think it's well past time for me to do something to establish myself as my own man. Leave my own legacy behind. Kubitschek smirked, oh, I understand completely. You can't do very well Bra building Brasilia again, and the Trans-Amazonian will take a good while to finish. What are you thinking about? Lot smiled slightly. Saying, I think I was thinking about depoliticizing the armed military, forcing the Sabor and Hardliners to clamp up, and making my constitutional the most powerful faction in the armed forces. Let's make sure that no one will ever need to worry about a military takeover again. Kubitschek was impressed. This is not expected. Quite a darn good thing if nobody else has to worry about what we did. You have my respect, Enrique. You do. Constitution Sabon. Sorbon? 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 Let's get on over there. Come on. There you go. Oh, god dang it. You son of a whippersnapper. These infantry divisions are not very good, but whatever. That's what we got. Help them out. Bob Blomfontein? Ooh. Not ideal. Is that one? Name of political power. We can actually do this probably too. Uh, nepotism rises. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Oh, good, 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 good. You guys get in there? That's what I thought. Good. Good oh boy, they're really beating the crap out of us here, aren't they? Let them suffer. Suffer to what they must. So, I respect the military hierarchy. Change the military apparatus. I'm not sure which way we want, so I'm going to double check and see about this one. Here's Denny's contacts, raises loyalty, oh, some favoritism as a threat. An appeased military, Peruvian border, I say Castello Branco, promote the loyal, replace Cruel, leave Bevelacua, reshuffle complete, submit the Lot Act. Oh, political power plus 1%, more stability, which is good. Celebrating his passing. Mourn his failure. Oh god. Compromise with moderates. Cool the tensions. Implement fail safes. Reform the 11th of November movement. And prepare for the transition. Oh god. The plan continues. Operation Toucan. It's a plan to remove once and for all the threat of untoward military intervention in a Brazilian Democrat quarter. Or to politicize the armed force and teach servicemen and officers to understand once and for all that they're merely citizens in uniform, nothing more, nothing less. As an integrated tactical law. President Brazil looked around the room and gauged the attitudes of the small cabinet meeting was addressing. The second in command, Zhao Goulart, pledges full support. The Incredo Navis also agreed, saying that Quadros put it best, and that Lockheed counted on support too. Walter Salas, although less enthusiastic about it than Quadros was, also seemed supportive. On the other hand, the other military men in the room, Marshal Odilio Dennis, was more re resident. Enrique, this is a fairly good idea, and I won't deny it, but I have to advise you to be careful about the way you go about this. If we step on too many toes, things will go badly. Maybe you might want to walk it back. Well, I shook his head. If the military professionals know what is good for them, they will submit. So this to be done, it has to be done at once. It is for the good of Brazil. Quiet or reflection. But after turning out the lights, Odilio Denis leaned back on his chair inside his office, wiping off the sweat from his forehead with a napkin. It was a day like any other for the general, but there was one thing that he couldn't get any off his mind of. A few days ago, Lot had called a meeting with his ministers to announce his plans for a project, the last project as president, the Lot Act. Denis had already known that this was coming. For as long as he had known him, Lot had expressed his concerns about infinite military influence, but that wouldn't can help him couldn't help but feel like something was wrong with his good friend's words. He had spoken of the need to overhaul the military to ensure the loyalty to democracy and the elected president, regardless of who he was. <coughs> As a lieutenant unconsciously 
gripped the armrest of his chair as he reminisced his words. Had he forgotten who had helped put Vargas in power during the 1930 revolution against the elitist landowners? Did he not uh, know who protected the Brazilian seas against the Nazis who gave their lives to preserve South, Amer South African liberty from the third threat? This wasn't a lot he knew. There must have been some outside force influencing him. Yes, of course, thought Denny's as he mentally slapped himself, sighing in frustration. He should have known better than to just let lot hang out with the Marxist like Gulat and Brizola. Now his head was filled with blooming seeds of evil weakness. It was not too late, there was still time to save him. Finally letting go of his grip and wiping off the last few drops of sweat, Dennis got up and confidently walked out of his office. Once he reminded a lot of his duties as a soldier, the seeds of Marxism will quickly rot and he will have his old friend back. Marxism must be defeated. Of course it should be. Late at night, <coughs> the sleepy halls of the presidential palace were disturbed by the frantic shuffling of feet into one of its many meeting rooms. Why were they here at this ungodly hour? Was there a terrorist attack? A coup? No one knew, and lucky no one could muster up the mental strength to think about it either this late at night. As the men settled in their seats, lot opened the meeting. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm so sorry I've called you all for this meeting so late, but this is a matter of national security. Denny's, take it away. The room shift, uh, their, uh, shifted their sleepy eyes with the man sitting next to Lop, and the picture spilling from the photo he had thrown on the table. Going to her contacts, uh, the powder keg and Paraguay has finally been lit. Our country's collapsing into chaos. The worst of it is yet to come, but her fears of Bush War has been confirmed. The room lit up as the men woke up in their seats. Uh, all of them now analyzing the pictures that scattered across the table and various supports on them. Their attention would shift in a lot, all staring at him for a response. Which is why I will not be inter intervening. With your failure in the Bay of Goraria and the finishing of the Lobster War, we cannot afford any more follies in foreign lands when it doesn't quite concern us. Murmurs filled the room with, about whether or not Brazil should really get involved in it before any of them could properly speak on the matter. However, their murmurs were quickly stopped by a fist slamming the table. Settle down. I have a degree with President Lot here. We cannot afford any foreign intervention right now, not only because of the Lobster War and the Guerrero, but also because our intervention might incense Argentina enough to escalate this into a full blown conflict. We cannot have that. Not signal for Danny to calm down, take a seat as he spoke. Yes, I agree. I think we can all see the writing on the wall about this. Any intervention at the current time would be unwise. That said, I would like to have the second army mobilized and sent to the border just in case things got out of hand. How do we all? Thank you. The men in the room seemed to agree and scuttled, scurried back to their homes as a night, late night slowly turned into dawn. Paraguay is done. Oh boy. Or do respect the military hierarchy? Because I did check. Um, and this is actually almost completely brand new here. This bottom part is different. Actually, no, it's pretty much the same. This is almost all brand new, so. Spicing eye to eye with uh, Assis Brazil on every issue regarding the military, it would be very naive to attempt at removing the most influential figures in the military, making such a move could put Brazil and its people in danger, perhaps going as far as starting a civil war. Therefore, we must be partial and listen to Denny's advice after all. He's always been a great friend, and it was he who called Lot in 1955 to organize a counter coup in the protection of Julicino Kubitschek's inauguration against the UDN goons. Change will come to the military, but we must not be chaotic. <coughs> Exile Hardliners of the Amazon. The Hardliners may wish for dictatorship, but Lot is no dictator, and they are aware of it. We cannot shoot dissidents, and even if they threaten Brazilian democracy, but this does not mean we cannot get rid of them by another means. And what better way than to send them to our muddy and exotic backyard? A place where they need to worry about not getting malaria before dreaming about stealing a seat in Congress. The Amazon Rainforest will help keep them busy for the rest of their military career. Among the leadership of the hardliners, we will send General Sarmento on a prolonged vacation to the Amazon High Command Headquarters in Manus, where we can enjoy watching sloths climbing up trees instead of stressing about overthrowing democratic institutions. As you can see, we have no political power. Just the way we wanted. But we're doing okay. I'm not perfect. It's Brazil for after all. Ooh, this helicopter's we're going to need some more choppers, man. Big talk in Little Island. The small size of Montagustia Island made the disproportionate presence of the military facilities within it look almost comical. Still, the two-kilometer island, by virtue of its presence at the mouth of the La Plata River, was also guarded by the Argentine military and in turn disputed by Uruguay. However, <coughs> today it was a place where the mass er, of the plate came for agreement and not dispute instead. Indeed. If you could have imagined a situation under which the arrival of a Brazilian Air Force plane of the island's rugged airship would be so well received for the Colonel Carlos de Maramatos, the plane's passenger, and that was also the case, as the rising star of the Brazilian military, Matos had sooner expected to be invading the island than negotiating in it. Another man who would rather go to war with his interlocutor than discuss it with him was Eduardo Bocha Ribeira, recently promoted to a Brigadier General and Commander, and perhaps the most serious exponent, or exponent of the nationalism in the Argentine army. Begrudgingly, accompanying the foreign minister Mario Amadeo, Ura Burro saluted the Brazilian colonel and he had two Uruguayan generals, Omar Porcionicula and Hugo Terrebochi, who arrived by boat from Colonia a few hours earlier. Officers from the naval aeronautical or aeronautic services, as well as foreign ministry bureaucrats of all three countries, now some of the naval headquarters building, turned from formality to discussion of the issue which had become so pressing as a force of cooperation, the black sheep of the plate, Paraguay. I stipulated in a memorandum to the Brazilian Uruguayan foreign ministries. The triumph of communism in Paraguay would be unacceptable to Argentina. However, we would not wish to act against such in it, it in such an eventuality, with the acquiescence and indeed help of our neighbors. 
Amadeo himself, known a paragon, a known paragon of nacionalismo, was nevertheless an intelligent operative in geopolitics, and his willingness to use the mechanisms of consultation that had become more common after after the war was perhaps what made him such a useful person to have at the Argentine Foreign Ministry. While we would not like to have participate, precipitated action, we in the Brazilian military cannot acquiesce to a government of those characteristics in Paraguay either. Mat Matos let a smoke from a cigarette while a pair of Etomari sycophants nodded their heads in the recognition of the military's control of foreign policy. This needs more detailed discussion. Indeed, Amadeo's response was filled with a smug and somewhat resemble a uh, sense of affirmation that the intervening translator did her best uh, to attend you, or attenuate. Then it was once repeated in 1870. <coughs> what are Argentines about? Yes. Very good. Ah, uh, sucks. We lost, but whatever. Chopper's just not strong enough, man. Need some motorized, huh? And at the air. We just need a lot of things, honestly. Basic check that city. Oh. Trust in the system with a nervous grimace on his, on his features. Marshal Denny's. Knocked on the door of President Lott's office. At a moment later, he heard a call for him to enter the, and open the door to face the man, giving him a salute. Mr. President, do you call to see me? Lott wrote from his desk. <coughs> Distracted with the general, meeting his worried look with a smile. Not easy, and yes, I want to discuss the matter of General Brazil's proposal. Then he saw his breath. After some consideration, he decided to go against it. Relief flooded through Denny's and saw a smile on his face. Ah, oh, it's good to hear. I trust you have other plans in mind for the army? Well, not indeed. I'll, we'll stick with the National Defense Council's advice and follow the standard procedure. It's better to stick with what works and let the men know I respect them and let them know they can trust me to lead them. Of course, you have trusted to place in good hands, my friend. A vigorous grin adorned his face now before adopting a more cautious expression. I suppose that means you'll put off that new bill of yours for a bit longer. <clears throat> ah, that's the president shook his head. No, I intend to stick with the schedule as I planned it. <coughs> Sir, with all due respect, Dennis began with a frown on his features. I think we have more important matters to deal with, such as South Africa and Marshall Lott interrupted with a certain look. My mind was made on this long ago. Now, it's not a matter I intend to ignore, nor one I will have debate on. <clears throat> I have placed my faith in you. And now I ask you to place your faith in me. Can you do that for me? Dead inside and disappointment, but not it. Of course, Enrique. Of course. Anything for you. Nice. Moderately industrialized. That's pretty good. Lightly developed. Lightly developed. Partially industrialized. Um... Well, we need political power. We can't do that. God dang it. Post new postings in Cayenne. That's not bad. Nepotism rises, though. Loyalty increases to the Peruvian border. Constitutionalist influence grows. Loyalty goes down. I like the influence, but I like going lowering theirs, too. Our brand new territory seems to be a hotspot for many soldiers, but not because of their wish to bring it closer to Brazil, but every time one is sent there, they come back with so many American dollars that it would make Adamar jealous. Well, they can return wherever they want, but since Kayan remains just an occupied territory, there's no longer any officially part of the Brazilian army. Therefore, they have no business meddling with the business. Uh, as such. Uh, to help speed up the integration efforts, we'll send General Medici from Porto Alegre with some qualified staff. By the time he returns, things will be far different in their army to spread any kind of hardliner thoughts, of course. Of course. Well, like I said, we've got some comments, such as, uh, those pesky journalists from Central Africa will no longer loot the Brazilian coast. Absolutely. Someone says, we're tough on piracy, but not on workers. Someone says, I don't really like where this campaign is going, as I fear you may force a lot to resign and let Quadros take the presidency, but it's our decision. But someone says, I really wish that Edna would take the presidency. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool, actually. Oh, boy. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's actually enough. We'll hop out here. Definitely. Nice. Ah, San Manto Fermentes. Can you do that? With help, yes, you can. I was ready to in Mountainous, uh, the capital of the state of Amazonas, and Cisendo uh, Sarmanto was angry and distraught. <clears throat> Despite his loyal service to the Brazilian Republic as part of his armed forces, he'd been shunted off to this darn backwater service commander of the local garrison forces. Read, do nothing but inspect 1,000 reservists at dawn and dusk every day. Sure, he'd been a bit too involved with the part of the military that thought it was their duty to govern Brazil, and saying that civilians should not be trusted to rule themselves, and they couldn't. The civilians were all moronic sh heads, or sh sh idiots. I'm sure maybe he got slightly overboard in disrespecting the then-marshal while they were colleagues in the military, but he was a moth and tell good for nothing. He deserved what he got. This is all too much. Gosh, darn it to all heck. Prisoner Nola had no stupid right to treat him like this for a stupid sake. 
for the next few weeks, our mental st stream of consciousness repeatedly followed this line of useless complaining when he plunged into an incre increasingly deep state of despair, being cut off from his former troops and from the halls of power. But after some time spent lying around used to sleep, Sumento shook his head from the slow of despond and stopped using curse words and began to make plans for an attempt to come back under another president, cursing Lot under his breath the whole time. Lot, on the other hand, was just glad to be rid of him. I said Castillo Branco. Since losing his first place in the military school to a lieutenant named Enrique Lot in 1922, Castillo Branco has considered the president a rival despite being a self proclaimed legalist. The rivalry reached its peak in the 50s when Branco called Lot an opportunist after accepting to become the war minister in Kubitschek's administration. To this day, both men remain at odds with each other. <coughs> We can address Castello Branco not to oppose the Lothat. A man of his influence helping the hardliners would be a disaster to our efforts. A to send him to Brother Amazon would be too dangerous, and even his followers will see right through it. Therefore, we must be careful and quiet in isolating him for now. Green heck. Luis passed a swipe the wet sweat from his brow. He stripped the coat of dust at a cake there throughout the day. Surveying the segment of gravel that just been in his day's work, he gave a tired sigh. Nearly identical gravel patches have been staring back at him at the end of every workday over the past four months. Finally, the sun was beginning to set, and in distance he heard the welcoming rumble of approaching trucks, signaling the end of yet another long day of building road. And there was took to return to camp. Luis's mind wandered far from the cramped trunk bed. He finished a small photo of his girlfriend out, fished it out from his pocket, and closed it with a locket that had become his only reminder of life back home. He turned the locket over in his hands, as if all these weeks he could spot some new detail he hadn't seen yet, or noticed, not noticed yet. Luis got something in her, their last days together. She had argued fiercely when he told her he was taking the job, disparaging the highway's lots of folly. Ha, ah, she'd always been smarter than him, more political. No matter the politics, no matter the argument that he needed to pay, Luis uh, resolved to call her tonight and check how her mother was doing, maybe. As the truck clattered to a stop, just maybe the Belo Mont, below the Belo Mont sign, Luis noticed a small crowd that gathered next to another one of the trucks. Um, his heart sank when he saw a body, horribly disfigured, that was being lifted out of the bed. He pushed through the small crowd to have a closer look and soon learned that the chatter from the corpse was one of the tree choppers, or used to be one of the tree choppers. A jaguar ambushed him away from his team. He never stood a chance. Luis couldn't bear to keep looking. He kept pushing through the crowd and made for the mess hall. He decided to make a phone call that night. At times like this, Luis was thankful he was one of the few road crew. The mosquitoes that natives were already beginning to, or not to worry about. Only 2,000 kilometers ago. God dang it. 200%? Are you kidding? Percent? Protesting Paraguay. So that's the first meeting of Martin Garcia began a few months earlier. The representatives of the still hypothetical uh, triple alliance militaries become somewhat enamored of their task, indeed. Some might not have incorrectly been accused of hoping for a communist victory in Paraguay so as to ensure all the preparatory work did not go into waste. Amongst Argentine representatives in particular, there are some believe that such an eventuality may achieve uh, a permanent solution to the problem of Paraguay as a geopolitical entity, indeed, or the intervening months. Their efforts have been directed towards ensuring or Argentina, the lion's share of Paraguay's population center, as an occupation zone. However, they've been forced to concede by the Brazilian intransigence that the capital, Asuncion, will fall within the Uruguayan zone of occupation. Perhaps the most common trail among the Argentine negotiators was a deep resentment of Brazil's double cross at the end of the last Paraguayan war, which they have even determined to avoid. Apart from the unusual war lost on the part of the General Uruburu, the Brazilian colonels pres present at the meeting had become somewhat reluctant to go forward with the project. They were only dissuaded from doing so by the rival of General Albuquerque Lima, an anti communist hardliner if there ever was one. Nevertheless, the newly arrived general seemed more interested in laying out plans for a return to normalcy in Paraguay, including his full restoration as an independent state. As for the Uruguayan diplomatic and military staff, which took part in the meeting, they clearly divided into two camps. The nationals surrounded uh, Porasu and Nicola were having the time of their lives talking about how they would, at home would be seen as heroes, while the liberals under Terra Bochi were increasingly dismayed by the tendencies of both Uraburi and Albuquerque Lima of considering expressions and tendencies of the Paraguayan opposition, which are perfectly normal aspects of the Paraguayan or Uruguayan politics, as communist enough as to justify intervention on their own right. Either way, their first priority was to make sure the nationals didn't get all the credit to avoid the disaster that would be the nationals' takeover of the armed forces. Their neighbors' lack of respect for Uruguayan sovereignty was a true, truly problematic or future problem. But you do not seem bright for small states. Oh well. Oh. We're doing okay, so, so, looks like so far. We should be more stability, but I always wish that. Shadow over South Africa. America! Despite everything, the Fulna had to emerge victorious, washing away all those that would oppose him. The Paraguayan Bush War is over, as the Fulna broadcast a glorious Masson to the rest of the continent. However, as fears of, uh, <clears throat> all fears of a contained isolated Red Paraguay lie shattered, and in the worst ways possible, slipping from the shadows of the Paraguayan per jungle, Che Guerra has revealed himself to be the true leader of the Fulna. The situation, oh god, has taken a turn for the absolute worst. Uh, che openly talks of the entire continent being following the s same path as Paraguay. As precise, the whereabouts are unknown, but it would not be surprised if the revolutionary cells have already been trained to raise heck. Dealing with terrorism in our borders would be a fool's errand when the black rotten heart is within our grasp. To confront the future, one must turn to the past. A renewal of a triple alliance to confront Paraguay and threat must be revived already. Plans are for talks in Montevideo has begun to discuss the next move. With Argentina all in, it will only be a matter of time until Brazil and Uruguay join the coalition. 
It seems that Shea wants to be, if he wants a people's war, then he certainly will get one. South uh, America smudges the war. Oh god. Well, so be it. Then he's, yeah, it's fine. Looking a little rough there, but whatever. Almost enough. There we go. More mechanization there. Nice. <coughs> I saw this guy agreeing to disagree. A crap room in a month video. The fate of South America was forever being changed. The diplomats. Set on three sets of chairs. Brazil is on the left, of course. Um, Uruguay in the middle and Argentina on the right in the simple. And in the, in the center, a sturdy mahogany table laid out a large simplistic map of Paraguay. Everyone in the room uh, wanted and needed Shea brought to heal. Uh, how was a very simple matter, and it was for the general staff of the Triple Alliance to figure out. The more troublesome issue was what to do afterwards, of course. The liberal uh, Fabristas, oh look at that, that's cool, our only option we want to keep Paraguay from collapsing in on itself, a Brazilian diplomat pointed to a large shaded dot straddling on the border of Paraguay and its neighbors. We may have to provide some assistance if things go too badly for them, but in governing, a new to Paraguay governed by the liberal Fabristas would do the job. Why do we need to give Paraguay up? We can simply agree to a splitting of that nation and go our separate ways, surely. Restoring Paraguay after such a transgression like this is insane to me. The Argentine counterpart retorted. Many of the Argentines and even some of the Brazilian team nodded and murmured in agreement. Invading a sovereign country is one thing. Keeping hold of it is most certainly another. If you want to fight a deeply unpopular guerrilla struggle against Shea's forces, go for it. But restoring the country is the cheapest, most reliable option for all of us, the Brazilian retorted. The Argentine diplomat fell aside and pointed to Asuncion. What about the heart of it all, then? Unless you want all of us, shoulder to shoulder sharing the city, something needs to be done. Give it to us then, and you're going uh, general interrupted. You two, ter ter you two would share ter territory part over Asuncion. You might as well give the city to someone with unbloody hands. The Brazilian and Argentinian looked at the Uruguayan, shrugging. The two rolled up the map and put it away. If Paraguay cannot decide the frontiers, and someone else will. Just a little bit behind technology. 40%. Oh, I go Central Europe. And happy September, everybody. 80% growth, I like it. Splitting of hairs. Day two, just the same as yesterday. Uh, the diplomats sat down in their exact positions. A few minutes of coffee, a few more out of conversation, as they did yesterday. Eventually, the pleasantries gave way to cold diplomacy. The Brazilian representatives unrolled the same map of Paraguay as from yesterday. On the maps, scrawled lines and dashes collided with hurried notes and addendums drawn across the entire country, testaments to the countless failed overtures and proposals of each and every side. Perhaps we can get somewhere with this. Issues of influence we have here, the Argentine representative said. As I was failing to mask his lack of sleep, we cannot afford to spend another day arguing about who gets what piece. For once, the entire room was united in their agreement, nodding. Of course, everyone wanted an agreement. It just had to be on their terms. So to go and agree to our terms then, you got to occupy Paraguay, but we'll return the occupation of our Asuncion. Well, this might be the fairest way to carve it up, the Brazilian responded. The room grew quiet once more. You want to be shot at by a Shayu's married band of girls while well, you get to loot Asuncion? Why not see Buenos Aires if you're so desperate? Oh, you're going representative step forward. Brandishing a highlighter. Suddenly he drew. A line straight through Paraguay in the south it was marked with an A, Argentina. In the north, B was drawn up for Brazil. And they drew a small sticker on Asuncion, U for Uruguay. Take it or leave it. Either way, this is as close as we get to an agreement. Just like yesterday, they started the proposal. For a long minute, first the Brazilian conceded, and then back down again. The Argentinian, making sure they looked up to be the most stubborn in the room, reluctantly conceded and walked. I know the issue resolved. We're problem solvers here, man. We solve problems. But listen to the National Defense Council. Surely we can work together with the NDC. We must answer their requests. Appointing constitutionalists to new positions in the higher ranks would destroy any chance we have at working together with them. If we throw the entire act into the trash. If we do not wish to cause any eruption between them and us, we shall appoint the requested people to the freshly vacated positions of general commander and other high-ranking positions. The end of the conference. Uh, today marks the end of the month of video conference. Still outside a drug deal in Sao Paulo. Never was such a miserable pile of skullduggery and backstabbing ever symboled itself again on the South American soil. Regardless, all the representatives can walk home to the masters with a smile on their faces and promotion in the futures. Sealed is the fate of Paraguay and the blackest uh, tempest of war gathers around the full mill. Beyond the well-concealed gambling addiction, addictions, stay in Italian suits and have gel hair our diplomats played their role well. That is to ensure that Bolshevism remains an obscure, dying ideology and it will never become anything more than a historical oddity that birthed itself from the frothing, brutal death of the Tsar's empire. The conditions agreed upon are simple. If the Bolsheviks were ever win their civil war in Paraguay, then this would pose the grave security risk of the Turkana. Therefore, the only recourse of action must be equally as drastic or dramatic. The formation of a new renewed triple alliance against Paraguay must be created. The army of Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay will march together to deliver the people from the ungodly ideology of Marx and Lenin. We will topple the full and then restore a sincerely free liberal democracy in Paraguay, beholden to no one but, but themselves. But for now, all we can do is watch. 
Let us see if Paraguay can decide their fate properly. If not, then we'll all do it ourselves. The stage is set. Knowing how to celebrate. Pedro shouted for the ball, making a, pass, uh, making a run past the midfield line, and Zhao fired a quick pass to, to him. Sprinting down towards the opposing goal, a beefy center back took his way, crouching ready to dart to either side. Pedro grinned at him, made it to pass the ball around his left side, but instead chipped it in his head. Oh, chipped it over his head and darted past him. Others, other forward running, were running up on either side, but Pedro covered himself. He switched a ball onto his favorite left foot and sent it rocketing into the back of the net. The keeper never had a chance. Garasin, Garancha, the Teodoro from the sidelines, holding a bottle of beer in the air, he took a deep breath and sent it over to Leo, Lilo, who was noticeably not celebrating her boyfriend's goal. Instead, he was filling with some strange device Teodoro had never seen before. The stupid, what is that stupid thing? Uh, Teodoro asked her, trying his best not to slur his words and hiccup slightly. Radio, she replied, wriggling her nose in concentration. It's from Japan, some company called Sony. <laughs> Mother bought it last week, I just don't know. She had a few buttons, so the Orani cord was blaring at the top volume across the beach side of Rio de Janeiro. She just went up from the guys playing football, and some of the bathers were even coming up to the long to see what was going on. Lila patted the radio, and she and Teodoro began singing in Oracus Harmony. Hi, Johnny. Hi, hi Johnny. Hi, Alfredo. Oh, thank you. So, Morito. Led by uh, Sony's. Mori Sony? I can't speak anymore. Oh, my God. Kenneth Archer. Chester. Huh? That's a little different. Oh, the American's still here. Fighting hard. Fighting real hard. A phone call. We're ready to invade if we need be. Um. It was a quiet afternoon, Recifa, for those who lived in everyday life, but not so much for those who happened to be one of the commanders of the Northeastern Military Command. It was a case for a man named Castello Branco, who had finally been found some time, free time to make a particular phone call to sat at his desk. I don't know what's gone into Enrique's head now. Castello Branco grumbled at the phone. What does, what does he think he can achieve by sending so many of his my men to the Amazon? I never requested for any new transfer here, let alone those who just talk about how great Lot is all day and how he's a savior of democracy. And who the heck do they think he is? The old marshal was never one to use words pro uh, profanely, but his dignity was being tested this time. But Uncle never liked Lot. Ever since the lieutenant days back in the military school in Rio de Janeiro, they were always competing for more influence in the military, but now he thought Lot had gone too far. How am I supposed to enjoy a meal and drinks with my colleagues when I must have someone's accompanying me? Every time I leave my house, Bronco continued to scowl the phone. I understand how you feel, Marshal. The voice on the other end of the phone answered. I wish to... The voice was cut off by frustrated Bronco. If you understand, then you know what your duty is. Tell Enrique to end all his madness and to return things at once at, to normal at once. Or else he'll face the drastic consequences of his actions. Goodbye. Castillo Bronco hangs up, taking a deep breath, and leans back in his chair, looking at the ceiling while reflecting on the past few days, only to be interrupted by a knock on the door. Come on, said Castillo Bronco. Sir, the delegation from the mayor of the Tumbalba has arrived. Oh, great. More petty bureaucrats to deal with, the marshal thought. Hope you make the right decision, Denny's, Castillo Bronco murmured. Some wars last forever. Use Denny's contacts. Our war minister and friend, Odilio Denny's, has contacts with the military, ranging from loyal constitutionalists to the most aggressive hardliners. It would be significant waste if we don't use this opportunity to try and bring more people to fight for a cause. As they've always been shown to be loyal to lots of constitutional crusade, we should leave them to speak to more moderate anti-constitutionalists and assure them that the act is nothing, something, is not something worth fighting against. An elephant enters the room. Uh-oh. Thereby, I promise to protect Brazil, protect the interests of the army in respect, and protect the future of the fatherland against the politicians on my new position, being eternally vigilant against communism, and all communist infiltrators, uh, traitors, rebellious civilians on my tenure as general, said Silvio Frota, after receiving his new promotion as a general of the army after the death of General Ancora a few days prior. This is really bad, said one of the officers in the back. A close to his friend, Silva, he's not even pretending to like democracy. We fought war, said Silva. I'm just trying to get, I'm just getting a bit tired now, you know? Mikel knew exactly what Silva was talking about. The Brazilian army had never been a unified, unified institution, being divided into many different uh, factions since its creation. For decades, supporters of the democracy have tried some with success, other times not so much, to prevent tyranny from taking power. Uh, first, the sword dictatorship under Floriano Pixoto to the butcher, then Arthur de la Silva, Bernardes, and his martial law, followed by the new state under Vargas, and now the escalated military radicals about people like Frota. No way to fix this permanently, so continued Michael. I'm afraid the only way is to continue this war forever. I tried to finish the speech and returned to his bench. Everyone got up and began to plot his figure. I know, but what, what I was thinking, well, what was that thing that the random American said? I think it was, the press of freedom is eternal vigilance. Well, we didn't lose anybody we cared about, so. And that's what matters, my friends. Bastions on the sea. Nice. Well, we're getting closer. Um, doing okay so far, so. Where is anti tank? Oh, transport helicopters, that's not good. We're still making a few, not many.
Oh, we're looking here. We are at 0.1 billion dollars every month and quarter political power. Progress by 14.5% every year. We're 62.8% of the way there. Well, it's not honestly that bad. <coughs> nice. Base bleed. Happy November, everybody. Happy, happy November. Just lots and lots and lots of mechanization. Um, I'm not sure if any of this stuff would be really useful for us to get to right now. Planes? Sure. Why not? Are we using planes? Yeah, we are. Fedlusk. Nice. Speaking of military clubs. <coughs> The military clubs are probably the most important place a soldier would attend in their career. In those places, a small group of positives have successfully convinced other soldiers to participate in the 1889 coup, which established a republic to, that to this day stands strong. But, importantly, it was also where a lot learned about the conspiracy to prevent Kubitschek from becoming the president in 1955. Also, organized make speeches at those clubs and rather the apathetic soldiers to the constitutionalist cause, ensuring that if the worst were to come, we have men on the side to fight back against those who dare to threaten and present democracy. But, I think I might send the episode there and we'll continue on with the South African War and seeing what the heck is going on. Oh, we got a lot of loyalty, unquestionably low, with Paraguay, because that is not good, what's happening over here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But I hope they get a focus tree someday, too. But, if, but like I said, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do with Brazil. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.